December 2021, Las Vegas, Nevada. Hi, this is Janet, and I'm Sly. Back in 2016, we both decided it was time to stop working, buy an RV, and start traveling the country and the world. And once the RV was pretty much the way we wanted it, we started our travels, and we've been doing it ever since. So join us as we explore this country and the world, and maybe we can even meet up with some of you along the way. This time we brought friends to the underground speakeasy, which is quickly turning into our favorite bar. And these are our new friends, Mike and Susan. Since they had not yet discovered the speakeasy, we wanted to be the first to introduce them to this most excellent, excellent bar. We quickly settled in with some drinks and a little conversation before the band began to perform. This weekend, it was the Gatsby Gang Jazz Band, which featured an excellent keyboardist. The singer was also really fun to listen to and watch. They together put on a great show. They played a variety of tunes, and that just made for a great evening out. The four of us had a wonderful time just sitting there, enjoying the bourbon and enjoying the music. And I know we'll be back here again because this has turned out to be our favorite bar in Vegas. A few days later and we're back down in Vegas, but this time for Cowboy Christmas. Cowboy Christmas is at the convention center. And what it really is is just a lot of different booths where you can buy Christmas gifts with a Western theme. We found free parking at the Westgate Resort and Casino. Of course, that means we have to walk through the entire casino just to get to the convention center, which is across the street from the Westgate Resort. We walked through the casino, crossed the street, and stepped into the convention center, only to find out that the Cowboy Christmas was clean on the other side of the center. And man, the rest of this convention center was like a ghost town. Now we came down to the convention center just to see Shay. Shay is a Facebook friend of Janet's from the Girls That Love to Travel Facebook page. And it was fun to meet somebody that we had only known online. We explored the exhibit before going home with a promise to meet the next night for drinks. We picked the 1923 Prohibition Bar at Mandalay Bay. We chose it because we liked that bar, and Shay happened to be staying at Mandalay Bay, so it made it easy. Drinks were great. The ride home, not so much. So two things. Yes, it actually does rain in Vegas on occasion. And second, driving in Vegas absolutely sucks. And the only thing that sucks worse than that is driving in Vegas at night in the rain. Man, oh man, was that a stressor. But we did make it home just fine. And we spent the next few days just taking care of business before starting out on our next excursion. Our next excursion took us down to the Colorado River. 
Now, it's been really cold for the last two days, and today, well, it wasn't going to be warm, but at least it was going to be almost 60. And that, we figured, was good enough to go down to the river, sit on the beach, and just enjoy some time outdoors. Now, some of you know I have a thing with signs, especially falling rocks and fallen rocks. I will have you know that there was no sign anywhere on this road about falling or fallen rocks. But... Round the corner, and there they are, rocks that have obviously fallen. So where are those signs when you actually need them? Well, even without the sign, I did a little bit of a swerve and continued down the road to the Colorado River. Our first stop was fairly high up on a ledge. This gave us a really good look looking up the Colorado River and then down the Colorado River. It's amazing just how blue this water is, especially when set off against the brown of the landscape. Now, like I said, it wasn't really warm, but it certainly was not cold. The temperature was about 55, and maybe that's why this place was kind of empty today. After getting a good look from the top, we found a dirt road that took us down to the shoreline. Yes, it's cold, and yes, that is a person out there swimming. All I have to say is, wow. Janet and I opted not to go swimming, but we did go ahead and take a nice little walk on the shoreline and on some of the little trails alongside the river. There were no people out here, and the only noise you heard was the noise of the wind. Talk about nice and peaceful. You don't get that very often. We spent a good while just wandering around this area before we finally had our fill and it was time for us to move on and have our lunch with a view. Our lunch with a view was not a view of the Colorado River, although admittedly that view would have been better. Nope, our lunch with a view was a view of a ghost town. We were looking down at the Nelson Ghost Town in the El Dorado Canyon. Now, the Nelson Ghost Town isn't so much a ghost town as it is a roadside attraction. Now, I would highly encourage you to stop at the Nelson Ghost Town if you're into looking at old cars, old looking buildings, and lots and lots of vintage signs. They've got Big cars towing very little RVs. They've also got airplanes. I'm not quite sure how these airplanes got out there, although this one did not seem to have made it out there in one piece. They've got these big, old-looking buses, and then they've just got some antiques strewn all over the place. It's like a hoarder's dream out here. Oh, and you know my thing about signs? Well, here's one. This one lets you know that this is a fee area, but you have to go over there and read the big sign. The sign is cool. Obviously, they have a problem with stupid people, so you can't just walk around here anymore. But if you pay a fee, you can. So I guess stupid people don't pay fees? Oh, and look at that. They got a thing with kids. They shoot them. <laughs> this place is so cool. So we went over to this building just to see what was inside. But when we got there, stupid people problem again. So the sign said closed, but it wasn't. It was open. Although we didn't go in, we just took some pictures from the door. I'm seriously starting to wonder who these stupid people are. And then we found this. I mean, what are these things? It says telephone, but it doesn't look like it'll fit in my pocket and, and, and I don't get it. Do you remember these things? Well, anyway, enough of that. It's time to check out the gold mine. We ended our day out here by exploring the old El Dorado gold and silver mine. This is an authentic mine, and it's worth exploring. I'd encourage you to do it, but I couldn't take very many pictures because it was really dark in there. And so the day ends and we got one last look at the ghost town as we made our way out of town and headed on back home to the RV. We haven't had a chance to explore as much as we're used to, so I really enjoyed this outing. 
But this is winter, and this is our break from travel, because, you know, we really do have things we need to take care of, so this is the time to do them. November, December, and sometimes January is always like this for us. You've got to take care of business. And with this drive, we end our last excursion right here in Las Vegas for the year. It's been a really good year, and we have added lots of new states to the list of states that we have visited. Janet and I both hope that you've enjoyed following our travels over this past year. And more than that, we hope that you make some plans to make some trips of your own. As always, this video, just like all the others, will have a link to all the places we visited down in the description below. That, we hope, will make it easier to plan a trip of your own. And, if you're anywhere near us, drop us a line. We'd love to meet you, share some stories, and of course, a, a bottle of wine or two. As for now, we'll simply say goodbye, and tell you that both of us certainly hope that you continue to join us as we continue to explore this stop. <laughs>